praise the name of the Lord. If you have your Bibles tonight, and you would join me please in John, the 15th chapter of John. Oh yes, amen. John chapter 15. We're going to read the first eight verses. John chapter 15, the first eight verses. Amen. If you would stand with me, signifying you have found the text. If you haven't, while out there it is. If you'd stand with me in honor of the reading of God's Word. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8 this evening. And as always, I read from the King James text. The Word of God today reads, I am the true vine, and my husband is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, and it, that it may bring forth more fruit. No, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Amen. Amen. I just want to talk to us this evening for a while on the topic, grafted in. Amen. If you bow your heads with me just one more moment. Father, we love you, God, tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. We thank you, God, for the nourishment that it provides for our soul. We ask God tonight that your great Holy Ghost anointing would press upon the messenger. Help me, God, to speak forth that which you would have me to speak and to do so with clarity, Master, today that the people of God might benefit by the Word which you would submit to them by reason of me. Anoint every ear that we might hear and receive Lord, that it might not merely be words upon our hearing, but, Master, that it might be food for our soul. Grant it this hour, for we ask it in that precious name, Jesus. Amen. Praise God and amen. God bless you. You may be seated this evening. The Lord Jesus Christ says in John chapter 15, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. You know, it's amazing how many things in this world we can devote our attention to. Uh -huh. It is amazing to me how many things in this world we can make our primary. Uh -huh. See, not everybody lives putting Jesus first. Not everybody lives putting their walk with God and their relationship with the Lord first. The Lord did not say, I am the vine, you are the branches. He said, I am the true vine. Uh -huh. There are a lot of things in this life that you can devote yourself to, Rose, uh -huh. but they're not the right things. <laughs> You can get caught up in the pursuit of wealth or you can get caught up in the pursuit of celebrity or fame. There are many, many, many vines that you can attach yourself to hoping that it will bring into your life 
Uh -huh. okay. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Yes. See, we connect ourselves to those things that we hope are going to bring things into our lives that we desire. That's right. Oh, my God, have mercy. That's right. Are you following my line of logic tonight? We attach ourselves to those things that we want to see fruit uh -huh. from. Uh -huh. People who put all their energy and all their time into their jobs, they do so because they get out of that relationship what they want out of life. That's right. There are men today and women who are married, who have families and who have children, and they virtually ignore their marriages, and they virtually ignore their children for the pursuit of their careers. Uh-huh. Because they don't get out of their marriage, they don't get out of their family what they get out of their career. Uh-huh. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. It's true. Right. So, brother, we attach ourselves most firmly, most fervently to those things that are going to bring into our lives those things that we most desire. Yep. Makes me laugh how people, Brother Jack, will read in this passage and they will see how the Lord said in verse 7, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. How many Christians will quote that passage of Scripture and they try to, and preachers do it too. Uh -huh. And they try to convince you that this is a promise from God that you can ask Him for anything you want to ask Him for. Uh -huh. And He'll give you whatever you could well ask Him for. Uh -huh. In context. Uh -huh. That's not the case. That is not what this passage is saying. Mm -mm. No, the Lord is saying in this passage, if you want to bear fruit, and you want that fruit to be the byproduct of our relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, have mercy. If you want to be grafted in and you want to bear fruit that is directly related and in response to our relationship, said so then abide in my word. And let my word abide in you. And whatever you ask, well, I got news for you. If you abide in his word and his word abides in you, you ain't asking for Cadillacs. You ain't asking for Lincolns. You're not asking for Rolls Royce. You're not asking for Bentley. You're asking to be a soul winner. You're asking to be a testimony. You're asking to be a witness. You're asking God to open the door. My God have mercy. Got too many Christians today twisting and perverting the word of God to make God into a genie with a towel over his arm. Just ask him, what do you want next? What do you want me to give you next? What do you want me to give you next? That is not the nature of a child of God's relationship with the vine. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the fruit that appears on the vine is the direct byproduct of what, it, or excuse me, the fruit that appears on the branch is the direct byproduct of what it receives from the vine. That's right. And my God, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, if you're a spiritual person. If you've truly been grafted in, you know what it means to be grafted in? That means that those, that place where these two separate plants were cut off from their original yes. adage. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And the new branch yes. was brought, and it was married to, it was tethered to that old vine. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
<laughs> Amen. Oh, listen to me, children. That branch had better clean. Uh -huh. That branch had better hold on to that vine. Uh -huh. That branch had better be wrapped around tight, brother, with some rags or some tape or some wire. It better have something wrapped around it yeah. that holds it up against that vine uh -huh. as tightly as it can be held against that vine. Because if air can pass through them, uh -huh. oh my, now Brother Jack works with plants. Uh -huh. yep. If air can pass through, then what's going to happen is the area where the vine has been cut off will dry. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the area where the branch has been cut off will dry. Yes. And you can push them together till the cows come home. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they will not be able to be joined together so that the yeah. vine can be the, can feed the branch. That's right. No. You've got to take that branch when it's freshly cut and you've got to push it hard up against that freshly cut vine. That's right. And then you've got to bind it so that the sap and the life from the vine can flow into and through the branch. Amen. Amen. That's the only way you're going to get any fruit. That's right. Oh, my God, have mercy. See, I'm going to tell you something today. You cannot, you don't have the power to hang on close enough to Jesus. That's right. To be grafted in. That's right. There's a reason the Lord said, I'm the vine and my father is the husband. Because you don't have the power necessary. You don't have the strength necessary to take that old, withered up, sinful, ungodly, heathen soul of yours. Oh my God, have mercy. And push it up against the vine that is Jesus. Uh -huh. So that the sap, the life of his blood and his spirit can flow into right. you and through you and not only bring new life God just don't want you alive He wants you bearing fruit that's right, amen He doesn't just want you bearing fruit, He wants you bearing much fruit yes yes and it takes a miracle that only God can perform that's why the Word of God said we're saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Even the faith necessary to believe God for salvation, God gives us. Uh-huh. Because we don't have it in ourselves. That's right. If we're going to be grafted in, Brother Jack, it takes an act of God. Hallelujah. Yes. It takes a miraculous work yes. of God. Oh, I'll tell you what you can do. You can hold on to that vine. <laughs> you can grab hold of that vine and cling to it with everything you got. I was driving through Connecticut this week and I was remembering years of ministry. I've been doing this a long, 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 long time. Uh huh. I was born and raised in the Pentecostal church. I don't regret one minute of uh -huh. I don't care how many LGBT people want to rail against their, their upbringing. I don't care how many LGBT people want to complain and gripe about how the church did or how people in the church did. I'm sorry. I established a relationship with Jesus Christ as a child. I don't care what the pastor did. I don't That's right. Listen, if I told you my story, 
I've been burned by the best of them. Uh -huh. I've been done dirty by some of the biggest preachers in the state of Texas. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've had one of the biggest, most successful Jesus name, one God apostolic preachers in the entire state of Texas. Had him turn his back on me, call me names, and walk off washing his hands. Didn't want nothing to do with this old quitter boy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That did not make me wash my hands off and walk away from Jesus. That's right. Amen. I get sick and tired of people rose talking about how church folks hurt him. The church hurt him. Uh -huh. Preachers hurt him. Who cares? Uh -huh. Who cares? I'm not serving church folk. Uh -huh. I'm not serving the UPC. I'm not serving the Assemblies of God. I'm not serving the Church of God. I'm not serving the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world. I'm serving the God in whose name I was baptized. And that is where my relationship is. So I could care less about churches and preachers and people who haven't quite lived up to the mark. Uh -huh. Maybe I've got enough sense in my head to know that they're no more human than I am. Uh -huh. And just because they failed in the way they responded and reacted to me, that doesn't mean that they aren't serving the Lord right in other areas. That's right. Because God knows I fail them in all kinds of areas. I got some where Brother Jack I excel. And then there are other areas where I'm pitifully behind. That's part of being human. That's right. That's part of trying to live for the Lord. That's trying to make heaven my home and uh -huh. being so full of fault and frailty and weakness and sin. And hey. if it wasn't for the grace of God, wouldn't be none of us up there. That's right. What I think is going to surprise a lot of them is when they find out I'm there anyhow. Uh huh. And they weren't expecting to see me. Yeah. And that's all right because I'm going to have a big old shock look on my face too. Because I wasn't expecting to see them neither. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Act the fool. Act hateful. Act mean spirited toward people because you don't understand their life circumstance. You don't understand their journey. You don't understand their walk. Honey, when I see you in heaven, I'm sure I'll be as surprised as you are to see me. Uh huh. That's good. My Lord, have mercy. I'm going to tell you, Brother Jack, I'm driving through town, yes. driving through the valley where I pastored my first church, and I'm remembering back to the days. Oh, I remember some powerful, wonderful, oh, incredible church services. I remember the Spirit of the Lord falling in a little storefront in Ansonia, Connecticut. Uh -huh. and, I mean, we got to shouting, we got to dancing, and the, our church was full. I mean, it was full. We had far more seats than this, and there wasn't an empty one in the place. We got to shouting. There wasn't enough room to shout in the church. That's all right. We just opened the door. <laughs> yes. And I remember dancing right on outside the door onto the sidewalk in front of the building and shouting all over and dancing all over the sidewalk. Yes. People pulling their cars over. <laughs> Getting out of their car, hiding behind it like they're observing a war zone. <laughs> Watching us crazy Pentecostal people shouting and carrying on and dancing around like a bunch of drunks. Of course, them same people, Bill, they don't have a problem, one, going to the bar and watching somebody fall over off the bar stool. They don't have a problem, one, going to the nightclub and watching somebody tossing their hair around, screaming at the top of their lungs because their favorite song just came on. Uh -huh. But don't act like your faith is real. Uh -huh. Don't act like you really believe this message. Don't you shout about it. Don't you dance about it. Don't you start to rub the eyes because then you're just like crazy. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That's what they think. That's right. 
what they think. My answer to them is this. These men are not drunken with wine as ye suppose. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Uh huh. Oh, hallelujah. What you think is lunacy, what you think is crazy, is the manifestation of a very real God touching the heart, the mind, the soul, the body, the spirit of a simple human being. Uh huh. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> You don't have to see it to react to it when it touches you. That's right. I remember when I was a kid, <laughs> my father was a jack of all trades. Pardon the term, Brother Jack. <laughs> he was a jack of all trades. He could do it all. Plumbing, carpentry, electric, anything he needed to do, he could pretty much do. Well, I watched him one day doing some wiring. He was converting the basement in our little two-family house that we owned. He was converting it into a third apartment. And he was wiring up an outlet, you know. Funny thing about electricity. You can't see it. It's there. <laughs> you better know it's there. But you don't see it. You can sure feel it. All of a sudden, my father... He was trying to do something with his screwdriver, you know, and he accidentally kind of went too far up. And he completed the circuit. <laughs> and that electricity come through his body, and I watched him fly from that end of the room to that one. He went, gosh, whoa! The power coming out of that wire sent him halfway across the room. It's kind of funny to see. <laughs> I don't understand you Pentecostal people. I don't understand what all that shouting business is about. I don't understand what all that running and dancing and marching and, and jumping. I don't understand what all that's all about. Grab hold of an electric wire and tell me if you ain't going to act some kind of way. That's right. I'm going to tell you a little secret. When God gets real enough to you, uh -huh. oh my God, when God gets real enough to you, He'll touch you and you'll act some kind of way. Uh -huh. Because when the Spirit of God touches your mere mortal flesh and blood body, honey, you're going to react. Uh -huh. Trust me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Amen. This little church right here in Dallas, we've been here almost 14 years. It's been quite a number of years ago. Brother Willie Hunt brought a man in to the service. Friend of his, truck driver. We had a mighty powerful service that evening. We shouted a little. We danced a lot. <laughs> we had a good time in the Holy Ghost. And I preached a message, and when I was done preaching the message, all of a sudden some folks started coming to the altar. See, I'm real old-fashioned. I'm going to tell you, if you need an altar invitation to come to the altar, then uh, you don't need to be in the altar. Amen. I believe it. Too many Pentecostal preachers nowadays are so busy trying to make things happen, Brother Jack. Uh -huh. I'll tell you something. I'll know that you're hearing from God. I'll know you're responding to the word you've just received off this preacher's lips when you come to the altar at the end of the service before I've even finished preaching. Uh-huh. Amen. Uh-huh. Say, have you ever seen it? Have I ever seen it? It was regular in every church I've ever pastored. Uh-huh. I don't have to beg people to come down and pray. I don't have to beg people. If they if they got something out of that message, Brother Jack, and they know that there's an area of their life they need to work on, uh -huh. before I even finish preaching, half of them were already down in the altar praying, saying, God, help me to live what that preacher just preached. Uh -huh. That's right. I'm going to tell you, 
when the Holy Ghost touches you. When the Spirit of the Lord touches you. I had a lady in my first church she used to say to me, Oh, Brother Charles, I want to get zapped. <laughs> she used to see me get happy and shout, you know, and she'd see me get happy. She said, Oh, I want to get zapped. I said, Don't sweat it, it'll come. I don't have to do anything to make it happen. It'll come. It came. <laughs> came to me too. First time ever. Went into Riverside Church of God. See, I grew up in a Pentecostal church. I grew up in a church where as a kid, we had a marvelous move of God. Marvelous move of God. You know how you see Benny Hinn and all that falling down foolishness? And I'm sorry, you say, well, brother, do you not believe in people being slain in the Spirit? I do believe in people being slain in the Spirit. I most certainly do. I certainly do. I also believe that you can fake it. Uh -huh. I also believe some preachers make a clown show out of it. Uh -huh. And Benny Hinn's one of them. And yes, I said his name. Uh -huh. It's a clown show. It's a bunch of garbage. When it's real, sweetheart, I'm going to tell you. My little great-grandmother was slain in the spirit in the church I grew up in. Little wood frame church I looked at this week and remembered. And she was slain in the spirit and that lady didn't come off that floor for four hours. <laughs> uh -huh. And when she came off the floor, Brother Johnny, the only thing she could say was, he was beautiful. He was beautiful. Oh, he was beautiful. He was beautiful. That's all she could say. <laughs> over and over and over again. Because while her body couldn't even stand in the presence of a living God, and here she was in her late 60s, early 70s, flat on her back. <laughs> Jesus appeared to her in a vision and she said he was beautiful he was that's all she could say that's all she could say that's the only word she could get off her lips he was beautiful now we got people going down like pins in these foolish televised shenanigans uh -huh. and brother they go down and they immediately stand up like god is just playing games with you like you're just a little pinball game and god is just playing with you honey that's no more real than nothing amen trust me i know that's the truth that is no, there ain't no nothing real about that foolishness god does not put on dog and pony shows amen amen start telling you about Brother Willie's guest that he brought. I finished my message and I said if, if you'd like prayer, if you need prayer, feel free to come down and we'll pray with you. And that man, boy, he shot up to the front of the church. Never had been to our church before. Didn't know anything about us. I anointed him with all and prayed for him. I, honestly, I don't even know what his issues was. What he, I don't know if he even mentioned I think I've just begun to pray for him. <laughs> All of a sudden, he went flat out on the floor. We had to move seats for him. Had to move chairs for him. He went flat on his back. <laughs> After the service, he comes to me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. He said, I could not stand on my feet. He said, oh my God, my legs came out. I couldn't even stand up. He said, it was like somebody hit me with a bolt of lightning. I said, don't apologize. You do bother us none. We know what it's all about. <laughs> Didn't hurt our feelings none. He laid on that floor for I don't know how long. I said, my wife left me. I've got a kid. I haven't seen my kid in I think it was like two years or something. I said, I, my life's in a wreck. I have a problem with alcohol. Said I come up today because I need God to help me. I, I've got to overcome this alcohol. I've got to be a husband to my wife. I've got to be a father to my children. And I can't do it on my own. I need God's help. I got word, brother, a few weeks later, not months later, a few weeks later, that after that service, you know the one where God knocked him on his rear end? Yeah. His wife took him back. He quit drinking. 
He was being a husband to his wife. He was being a father to his daughter. Because, honey, God don't play dog and pony show. That's right. When the Lord laid him down, he put something in him he didn't have to do with him. Yes. Woo! I've seen it happen so many times. I've seen people come up to the altar that were bound by addiction. I'm talking, folks, serious addiction. Uh -huh. I'm talking about narcotics. You know, I'm not talking about addicted to pot. I'm talking about serious addiction. Mm -hmm. I've seen alcoholics come to the altar bound by alcohol. I've seen the power of God knock them right flat on their back. And when they stood up, they had no more desire ever to touch drugs. They had no uh -huh. more desire ever to yeah. touch alcohol. There was a change that transpired. See, when the power of God hits you, if it's the power of God, it does something. It's not about falling over. That's that's all that is. All that is is your physical reaction to experiencing the power of God. But if it's the power of God, then something is going to have changed. Uh -huh. Something is going to have happened. Uh -huh. And it will be supernatural. Yes. 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 You see people just falling over, standing right back up, but that, that's garbage. Turn your channel. Go watch Friends or something. You'll get something out of it of more value than watching that garbage. Trust me. Uh -huh. Trust me. But I begin, I'm driving around Connecticut, and I'm looking at these old places where we used to have church. I'm remembering how the Spirit of the Lord used to move. And I'm thinking to myself, Lord... I am so hungry. Uh -huh. I am so hungry for a move of God like that again. <laughs> yes, yes, Lord. I ache yes, Lord. right down to the deepest part of my being. I hurt. And I ache for an old-fashioned Holy Ghost move of God. I want it so bad I can't see straight. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my heart and said, If you abide in me, <laughs> and my word abides in you, Ask what you will, <laughs> and it shall be done. Hallelujah, yes. said God. And I yes. thought, Lord, this is the kind of prayer request that heaven answers. Yes. This is the kind of prayer request that the Lord likes uh -huh. to receive. Uh -huh. Not a prayer request, Brother Jack, for a five-carat diamond ring. Not a uh -huh. prayer request, Jack, for a Rolls Royce uh -huh. or for a Bentley. But a prayer request for the move of God, for the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Yes. yes. Woo. Grant it, Lord. Said Jesus. Grant it, Lord. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the latter rain. We need the rain, Lord. We need the rain, Lord. We need the latter rain. Oh, children, I want to tell you tonight. Grafting in. I watch too many people call themselves Christians who, who barely even pass by the vine on Sunday. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Never mind cling to the vine Monday through Sunday. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then they wonder why. Uh -huh. The sap ain't flowing. Mm -hmm. They wonder why that life that comes from the Holy Ghost. I was talking this past week to a, a gentleman who's my age. I grew up with him in this little town in New England. He grew up just two houses up the street from me. This poor guy found himself in a life addicted to alcohol, drugs, all kinds of stuff having trouble with his marriage, married a beautiful lady, had two beautiful children. 
and his life was just a train wreck. His name's Billy, and Billy said to me, then I found Jesus. <laughs> he said, oh, i got to tell you, there is something about the joy uh -huh. and the peace uh -huh. that comes in knowing the Lord. That's right. Oh, yeah. He said, man, I'm going to tell you what a difference. Oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. Oh, I can't explain it. And I cannot tell you why. But oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. It's an old song we used to sing. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you, folks. Too many people in our community making every kind of excuse. Too many people that aren't in our communities are making too many excuses. Uh -huh. They're not living for God the way God wants us to live for. That's right. And they're not bearing fruit. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, the branch that does not bear fruit is discarded. Uh huh. That's right. If you call yourself a Christian today and your life is a train wreck and everything's going against you and nothing's going the way that it ought to go in your mind, then I'm going to tell you today, consider this as a possibility. You are not clinging to the vine. Uh -huh. Because, honey, if you're clinging to the vine, <laughs> at some point, that branch and that vine become one. Uh-huh. I'm going to tell you something, honey. I ain't worried about falling off of Jesus. Uh -uh. If you're going to get me off of Jesus, you're going to have to cut me off uh -huh. because he and I have become one. <laughs> I've been clinging to that vine alone. And you know what? Now I can rest. Hallelujah. Now I can let go. Now I don't need the strength of my arms to keep me close to him. You know what? Because we have become one. Hallelujah to God. I'm part of the vine. And the vine is part of me. Glory to the Lamb of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It gets easier. Uh -huh. The longer you serve him, uh -huh. the sweeter it grows. <laughs> the longer you serve him, it gets easier, Brother Jack. Yes, it does. You don't have to cling so hard. Because once that vine has received that branch, and once that branch has begun to grow, and it has become one with the vine, you don't have to have it tied anymore. That's you don't right. have to have it wired anymore. That's right. You don't have to have anything holding it in there. There's a reason why when people come to church and they first make a commitment to live for the Lord and they first make a commitment to be a follower of Christ, there's a reason why we in the church try to help them by putting folks around them to encourage them and educate them and train them. There's a reason why we do that. What we're doing is we're putting a few rags around that little scrawny branch. Uh-huh. Because it's just newly attached to the vine. Uh -huh. And it doesn't take nothing but a good wind to blow That's it off. Right. That's right. <laughs> but you know what? You, if you can keep them up there long enough, yes. eventually they're going to grow together. Jesus uh -huh. said, if I'm in you and you're in me, you know why? Because eventually that branch becomes part of the vine and that vine becomes part of the branch. Uh -huh. They're no longer two separate entities that are connected. No, it's one branch and one of its vines. Hello. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I use tonight as my illustration for this message, the grapevine. It's interesting that the Lord used the analogy of a vine. He didn't say the trunk. He didn't say I'm the trunk and you're the branch. No. No. A trunk is a pretty strong thing, but branches aren't necessarily so. And a branch can grow 
and never bear fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. But a grapevine cannot. Because every branch on that vine is designed for one purpose, to bear fruit. That's why it's there. Every bunch of grapes you see there is off of a branch that comes off of the primary vine. Mm -hmm. If there's a branch, there's fruit. Am I telling the truth? Amen. And the Lord said that the Spirit of God, our Father, will cut off any branch that doesn't bear fruit. You know why? Because God wants all of His resources going to those that are going to bear fruit. Uh-huh. Brother Jack, you know what it is when you have a garden. Uh-huh. One of my biggest mistakes in growing a garden years ago, I... You know, I plant so many seeds and all of a sudden, boy, this big old pile of bushes that grow up, tomatoes or cucumbers or squash or whatever, you know? And I would be so thrilled that I had this enormous, gigantic, wonderful plant that I wouldn't touch it. Oh, I wasn't going to cut nothing out. I wasn't going to pull nothing out. And you know what I had a few months later? A big, bushy plant with a whole bunch of leaves on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's right. Uh -huh. In order to get fruit, you got to prune it. Uh-huh. In order to get fruit, you've got to get rid of everything that is extraneous, everything uh -huh. that is extra, everything that is unnecessary. You can only have one plant growing there, Dunkoff, not three of them, not four of them. Uh-huh. But see, just because each seed took, I let all the plants grow up together, and I would not get the yield because all of the earth's resources were going into maintaining all of these plants mm -hmm. you following me today yep and god says uh -uh. it's not how i operate i operate smart <laughs> she does. you know what if you have no interest in bearing fruit if you have no interest in being the kind of Christian, the kind of child of God that I've called you to be, I don't have any issue breaking you off and tossing you aside and letting you dry up in the sun. That's right. Because my children that want to serve me, my children that want to be blessed, Amen. my children that want to live for me, my children that want to be a testimony, uh -huh. I'm going to make sure they get everything they need to bear uh -huh. fruit. Uh-huh. Because I don't want them to bear a little fruit. I want them to bear a lot of fruit. Mm -hmm. And the only way for any branch to bear a lot of fruit, you have to get rid of all the fruitless branches. Yeah. That's right. That's right. As many years as I've been in ministry, I have pastored churches and I've watched God remove fruitless branches. I've seen them do it. Mm -hmm. I've seen the Lord take people out of the church, didn't want to live for Him, wanted to play games, did they wanted to goof around. So I said, I don't need to shun anybody. I don't need to play those cult tactics. No. Let me tell you something. If, if you don't mean if you don't mean business with God, God has a way of getting rid of you. That's right. That's right. The only way this church is ever going to grow, the only way this ministry is ever going to accomplish the vision that God has given me as the pastor is when we are a people who are of one mind and one accord. Amen. Amen. Everybody got to be thinking alike. You say, well, does that mean we all have to be Borgs? No. But what it does mean is everybody that's in the room has to want the same thing. We have to want to see God move. We have to want to see the church grow. We want to have to see lives change. We want to have to see people saved. We want to have to see people healed. We want to have to see people filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Honey, when we all get into that same frame of mind, I'm going to tell you a little secret. You're going to see fruit popping out of these branches. That's right. Hallelujah. Because when you abide in the vine, mm -hmm. you think like the vine. Mm -hmm. Amen. The branch does not think independently. 
of the vine. No. <laughs> the only thought the branch has is the thought that the vine puts into it. That's right. And we got people think, oh, I can just pray and ask God for anything. God will give it to me. No, you're missing the point. Uh -huh. If you abide in the vine. If his word abides in you and you abide in him, then you shall ask anything. But if his word abides in you and you abide in him, then honey, I got news for you. You ain't going to be thinking like a worldly uh -huh. person. That's right. You're not going to be pursuing wealth and riches. You're not going to be looking for earthly prosperity and gain. You're going to be thinking like a child of God. You're going to go to bed at night singing the song. I remember, I'm almost done tonight. I remember as a kid, as a Christian, when I was a kid, the most important thought we had in our mind was, I want to win souls. I want to be a testimony. I want to be a witness. Man. I remember as a kid, Brother Jack, the preacher always talking about, do you have a burden for souls? I remember going to the altar in that little Pentecostal church in southern New England where I grew up. I remember going to the altar and being eight, ten years old and weeping and praying and asking God, to help me win souls. I used to go to that altar and weep for my father. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a testimony. I wanted to be a witness. I want to tell you, my heart doesn't break tonight because this church doesn't have hundreds of people in it. My heart breaks tonight because I'm not able to win hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. That's what breaks my heart. It, it, I, it's not the numbers, Brother Richard. No. It's the fact that I know for a fact tonight there's an awful lot of lost people in Dallas, Texas. Uh -huh. There's an awful lot of backslid and lost people in our community tonight. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people tonight that need restoration, that need reconciliation. I know they're out there. I know they're out there. And what makes me sick to my stomach is that for some reason, no matter how hard I paddle this boat, I cannot seem to get to mm -hmm. You want to see this preacher, you want to see a smile on his face Monday morning that won't smudge off all week long? Let us see one person pray through the Holy Ghost Amen. every Sunday. Amen. Yes. 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 Sweetheart, you won't be able to wipe the smile off my Amen. face. Amen. You won't be able to wipe the smile off my face. Amen. Let me see one person come in this building addicted to alcohol or drugs or with a sexual addiction and they need deliverance and let, 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 let me help them pray through to their victory you won't be able to get the grin off my face if you abide in me if my word abides in you and you abide in me you see when, when you abide in the vine like you ought to abide in the vine, then you think differently. Mm -hmm. The things that are important to you are not the things that are important to the world. They're the things that are important to God. And let me tell you what the Word of God says. The Word of God does not say it is the will of God that every one of His people should drive a Rolls Royce. No, it said God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come under repentance. Uh -huh. That's the will of God. Mm -hmm. God's will would be tonight that every soul that does not know Him would not leave this world until they do. Amen. That's the will of Amen. God. Amen. That's what God wants. Yes. Amen. That's not what's going to happen, but that's what God wants. Amen. And if we want what God wants, then that ought to be the direction we're going in. That ought to be where our desires lie. That ought to be where our heart lies. Amen. I'm going to tell you this week, as I was driving through Connecticut, remembering 30 plus years of Pentecostal ministry, 
I was telling the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm as hungry today for the move of God as ever I have been. Yeah. I need a church. Amen. I need a move of God. I don't need some dead old dry thing with a bunch of people playing games. Amen. I need a church filled with Holy Ghost filled people yes. that want to live for God, that want to yes. that want to worship God, uh -huh. that want to do right, want to act right, want to be a testimony and a witness for His name. That's what I need tonight. Amen. I don't know what you need. I don't know what kind of church you'll be satisfied with. But honey, that's the only kind of church I'll be satisfied Amen. with. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to keep working until this church becomes that church. Amen. 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 Amen.